Christina. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, can you see my live on Instagram? I'm going to try to get you situated on both over here. You want to navigate to my No, and I don't know why. Hmm. You might have to check it out and see. Um, if you navigate to my Instagram page, you might be able to click on it and view. Yeah, I am. Yeah, no. Here we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I'm going to pop up here. All right. Well, thank you so much for um, joining me today. And look, here you are. I can see you now. And I will add you here. Perfect. perfect. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds good. Hi. Um, it's so great to have you on both of these. We kind of situate this so that I can, you can see my face. All right, perfect. So we're live on Instagram. We are live on Facebook and we're live on YouTube. And I'm so excited to have you here. Um, for those people that are watching that don't know, um, my name is Alexandria and um, I am from the Foreign Court. I'm cooking one meal from every country in the world and I'm doing it in alphabetical order. And so, um, hi, Michelle Unicorn. Hi. <laughs> Uh, Felice Daniels. Hi, everybody. Um, so today I'm starting cooking the Czech Republic. And so I've asked Christina from Czech Cookbook to join me because she's an expert in um, food from the Czech Republic. So, um, Christina, if you want to give a little introduction to yourself, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for having me and greetings to everyone who is watching. And if uh, you've never been to Czech Republic, I recommend you visit because it's beautiful. We have so many amazing castles and just history and architecture is so rich in such a small nation. Uh, so I recommend that you come to visit. And also the food is incredible. I know, I'm really excited to learn about the food. I actually went to um, the Czech Republic uh, last two years ago, I went to Prague. Um, I was backpacking Europe, and so one of my stops was Prague. So um, I got to see the Czech Republic, but I only got to see Prague. But I think that was a pretty good, good. That was a good place to visit for the Czech Republic. It was really beautiful, and I felt like sometimes I felt like I was in a, a Disney movie. Like there's just castles yeah. <laughs> and so, like towers everywhere. It was yeah, beautiful. like everything is so compact in Prague. So you feel yeah. like you walked in a fairy tale or something. Exactly, yeah. There's like literal <laughs> towers that look like um, Rapunzel in the movie Tangled. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Yeah, yeah. But that's how I felt there. I was looking up at all these towers. They were so beautiful. So yeah. it was really fun. And the food there was delicious. And you have a, a um, blog about Czech food. So mm -hmm. um, I have some questions here that I want to ask you about Czech food. So I guess I can jump right into it. So the first thing, actually, this is a... Um, question that I actually didn't know myself and um, I had to Google a lot and I know you and I were just talking about it but um, tell me should we call it Czech Republic the Czech Republic Czechia I've heard is now um, the English name for the Czech the Republic short, so, the short the okay. version <laughs> yeah so which of those is right and what should we be calling it in this interview so I will never call it Czechia because I just don't like it. And majority of Czech people don't like it. So they will not oh, okay. call it uh, because government just decided to shorten it uh, without anybody like being involved or just, you know, ask people if we like it or not. Uh, but they just do what they want to do. But even some like prime minister doesn't like it. So he will not call it Czechia. And it's so close to Chechnya that we just don't like it. We don't want to uh, be confused. We are just Czech Republic. And it's already confusing for people that we are not Czechoslovakia. So now right. it's Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic. It's Czechia. So people just get so confused by all of this. <laughs> all of this, you know. So it's still officially Czech Republic. The Czech Republic, I like to say. But it doesn't really matter if you say Czech Republic, the Czech Republic. But okay. Czechia is the the short the shorter version. It, it, it's like French Republic, so it's France. So they tried to just come up with like shortened version, so they don't say the Republic. But it just didn't catch. So it's it just didn't catch. Okay, you know. gotcha. So yeah, Feed Foodie says Czechia is now official, and it's funny. Um, when so there's different ways to spell Czechia that I've seen too. 
So like sometimes I see it spelled um, this way that Feed Foodie on Instagram says C-H-E-Q-U-I-A. And sometimes I see it C-Z-E-C-H. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Feed Foodie <laughs> says still call it Czech Republic. Yeah. Um, it's nicer, yeah. I guess. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's what you feel too. Okay. So tell me about your background with the Czech Republic. So right now you are living in the Czech Republic, right? But you've also um, lived in the United States for a little bit. So tell me about... Um, everything like with the Czech Republic where you're from and all of that so I was uh, born and raised in the Czech Republic in uh, second largest city uh, Brno uh, so it's Prague and the second largest is Brno uh, so I grew up here I grew up in uh, Czechoslovakia uh, when it was still Czechoslovakia so the times were not as easy it was different but I wouldn't change it for anything it was just special uh, we have great memories uh, we i think it shaped us into appreciating things much more and don't take things for granted because it just was different living in those times so everybody was so excited when the communists fell and fell down and we just could freely travel and just see the world and suddenly our mind was open for there there's something more than just you know europe or just just Czechoslovakia because we are not really allowed to travel much except to former Yugoslavia or Germany. So or Germany. it was just just yeah, just East Germany. So it wasn't or Hungary. Some people would go sometimes to Hungary, but you would have to have like a special papers and it was so difficult. So people did not travel, they didn't even have, have money to travel. So it was interesting times. Uh, to just live in and then when I was able to travel I went to the United States and it was just like my mind, mind just was blown away because it was first time on a plane and I'm going so far wow, away. That's a long plane ride for your first time on yeah. a plane. <laughs> it was it was long and it was just and my English wasn't as great like I just took four years at school so we just didn't understand much, but we somehow communicated with the with the family I was staying with. Uh, so it was just lots of adventure, and and also it just opens up your mind to see that the world is so big. The United States is so big, and we just lived in this little tiny bubble, you know. <laughs> yeah. So and lots of people still have the mentality, you know, that's it. It takes times for time for the people just to change the mindsets so yeah so what was it I mean we you talked a little bit about what it was growing up in what it was like growing up in Czechoslovakia but um like a lot of I mean at least for me I don't really know much about um what that kind of lifestyle is like so like were there certain like rules that you guys had to follow or like what was it you know what was it like living mm -hmm. there and then also what was it like in that moment in history when everything about that changed when you know Czechoslovakia fell and communist regime fell mm -hmm. so uh my parents were always trying to protect uh, sister and i uh, my brother was all is older so he was already married uh, very young so he wasn't living uh, in our house so uh my parents always uh, made sure that we had everything we needed uh, but like for example you could not have business uh, everybody had to be equal equal pay equal work if you do like business on a site you can go to jail so people just left uh, like everybody is equal there's no nobody is above anybody uh, unless you are a communist part in the communist party because that's just and they wanted so many people to join the communist party because then you have certain benefits but so many Czechs they knew that it's wrong and they just didn't want to join so there was lots of bad things happening to good people and luckily like I didn't experience it but I know lots of people escaped uh, so they got like into a better place but for example there was like there were shortages there were shortages of toilet paper for example because they didn't just made enough uh, we didn't import things uh, we just had like fruits and veggies that we grew 
So for us, bananas, for example, oranges were so foreign and they were available like they were available before Christmas and you have to stay in the line and hope that there is still something when you get to the line. Like there was uh, meat, for example, you stay in a line and like it was almost like we call it under the table hidden, like for people, uh, the butcher yeah. only gave it to people he knew. So it was like, so so different so so just and everybody also wore same clothes uh so oh, you did. yeah okay. so so what many was that what did you wear like exactly same you know the stores carry the same jeans same shirts so we would so many would wear the same clothes uh like same style of clothes unless like for example my mom she went to hungary with her with her work or something like for a trip day day trip and she bought the uh, sister and i some clothes and when i wore it to school everybody was like wow look at this tom and jerry uh sweatshirt like this is this is incredible where did you get that so you felt a little special you know because well, yeah <laughs> you had just something <laughs> yeah. and lots of people made their own clothes so you have something different uh so that was that was just, that's why I said I appreciate little things. Like I never would take food for granted because I knew how uh, how it was and we never would waste food because we would just try to use everything that uh, we, we bought and we never threw away food because that's just was in our mentality and because there was not enough and it was expensive. And so, but it was, it was still nice. Like you have, the same same toys, you know, same same things. And now when I look at back and see those toys, it's just meaningful, you know. It's like, wow, this is what everybody else had. And so it's, yeah. it's interesting to hear about because um, obviously, like I've never experienced anything like that. So it's really interesting mm -hmm. to hear that, like, like everyone had the exact same toys and yeah. all of that stuff. That's interesting. What was it like, um, like? Where would they get the supplies to make the clothes? Yeah, so where did, like, when the government was making those decisions, mm -hmm. did, was so, there just, like, one big factory, like, churning out? Um, so we had a fabric, fabric stores, uh, which were very uh, available, just, just like, a store where you go buy fabric, you buy uh, threads and needles and uh, all of that. So you just easily buy fabric and just make, make the clothes I remember my my sister in law. She would be the one making the clothes for us. Really? So, so yeah. everybody made the clothes like in their own home with the fabric that was provided. It, it, Is that accurate? It was not provided. You buy it. You buy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. But this way, um, you can be a little uh, adventurous with the design and the the style of fabric. So that's why uh, you try to not look like everybody else. So. <laughs> Okay, that makes sense. So, what was that? What was that moment like when um, you found out that, like, your country wasn't going to have communist rule anymore? Like, were mm -hmm. people excited? Were people timid? Were people like happy, sad, scared? Like, what? Yeah. How, did, how was that? So, I was uh, I was still quite young, so I don't remember much of it. But older students, they were very involved. Uh, they went to the streets uh, because it was it started with uh, like a college students that just said we had enough uh, uh, and they went to the streets and suddenly the actors joined them because so many actors uh, were if you speak against the regime you are not allowed to play anymore you're not allowed to be on TV anymore if the singer starts to create songs against the regime he is forbidden. So, uh -huh. uh, so so many actors and singers and just celebrities joined this movement and they were like, no, we are not playing, uh, we are not doing uh, any more plays. Uh, and they joined these students on the streets and suddenly it was so big that the government just couldn't have control over this. They, of course, uh, had the police, uh, there was some some beatings uh, and stuff like that, but there were so many of these students that government, and it, it kept going, it kept going, you know, days and days and days. And uh, 
more and more government realize that they're losing control and losing a hold and they couldn't hold it anymore. So it just completely fell. And the guy who was uh, a writer, uh, who was writing about against the regime, he ended up in a prison. He suddenly was the main speaker and he was the one who was leading it and just speaking in front of thousands and thousands of people. And he became our first president. Oh, so cool. it was like, he is going from a prison where he is in prison by regime and he's now a president. So his name is yeah. uh, his name was Václav Havel and he became very popular also in the US. He went to visit and so this was amazing to see a regular guy who is not politician, just made it into a politics. So uh, we were still Czechoslovakia, but um, uh, Slovakia always, Slovakia is smaller part, for smaller part of Czechoslovakia. Prague was in Czech, Czech part. Uh, sometimes we would have uh, Slovak president of, uh, most of the time it was like Czech president. So the Slovak government uh, just decided, you know, we'll, we will be probably better off if we just separate because we want to be independent. Uh, so it was decided uh, and it was very peaceful. It was, again, uh, this was a government who did this decision without asking people because Slovaks would never agree to it. They, they didn't want it. It was just something, uh, I, I mean, some people probably want it, okay. but... Uh, Majority speaking. Yeah, I would people say that... Okay. Like, personally, I would still wish we would be still one nation, because, like, yeah. my grandma, she was Slovak. So she, oh. and I still have family in Slovakia. So for me, you know, it's just, and we are still very close. We are still very close, but we did split January 1st, 93 and we became you know two republics and we kept our original flag slovakia had to make their own flag and our national item was split in half because ha one half was in czech language one half was in slovak language so they just took the other half <laughs> so i um i was doing some research on the flag of the czech republic and i know that, that little um the blue triangle that's on coming up from the left side of the flag. Um, I read that that represented Slovakia, because mm -hmm. could be. Yeah, like, is that accurate? I'm not. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not. I'm not sure. The history. And yeah, I think yeah. that's that's what it said. Is just like because the countries are still so close, they kept the same flag, which um, with the yeah. blue triangle originally is what was representing Slovakia. So it could be because they do have blue. In like lots of lots of yeah, yeah it's their color. Uh, Brandon says, "Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't know that." And yes, if you're on Facebook, you can see that um, that blue triangle there that represents mm -hmm. Slovakia. Um, okay, so I just have one more before we get into the food. This is kind of it's a good segue between family life and mm -hmm. life in uh, Czech Republic and the food. But I read that mushrooming um, is really popular. Oh wait, first we have a question that's projected on the screen. I think it's an interesting one. So, um, where was the first place you visited once you could travel? I think you said you got on a plane and you came to America, right? Uh, first place, I think I went to former Yugoslavia before that, but that was, it's still not that, not that far, still, like, but I went to Florida. Yeah. My first okay. like big trip, I went to Florida. Very cool. Um, okay, so I, like I was asking for, um, I've read that mushrooming is very popular. Is that true? Or tell, what is mushrooming? Do you actually, is that actually a favorite pastime? Tell me about yes, it. Yes, mushrooming is Czech obsession. It's the biggest hobby. <laughs> it's uh, it's so popular that you will see you will see it on a national news. That this oh pa Pavlov. That is a national sport. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. You could, yeah, you could call it like a national sport because people are just so into this, and they uh, they even show it on the news if it's if they are growing or not growing, uh, what kinds are growing right now, and uh, it's just something because I think it's from those communist times when we try to be resourceful. 
uh, so that's and it's just became such a nice hobby and it's so delicious so i think that's where it all started and it's uh because forests they are uh, owned by government so it's not private land it's not like in us i realize that i cannot go anywhere into the forest because some are just private land so this was this is just different because anybody can go anybody can pick uh, mushrooms and it for free you don't have to pay anything and then you and so do people have like you just go out for an afternoon with the family and look for mushrooms and then come back and eat them that's pretty cool and it's so it's so extreme that like i remember times when we got up with my grandma at 4 a.m and it was it was already fall so uh, it was dark in the mornings so we would look for mushrooms with a flashlight just so we can beat everybody and we can so we can be first in the in the forest <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious i mean it's very it's interesting it's very interesting Best type of mushrooms, right? You, you probably are trained, right? Yep. To know. Yeah, we, uh, we like my family. Yes. We don't pick up the ones that we don't know. Uh, there are so many edible ones, but if I am not hundred percent sure, I'm just going for the ones I know. And a good tip is if if it's yeah. like halfway or partially eaten by worms, it's good to eat because worms will not go for poisonous mushrooms. So if you if you see beautiful looking mushroom, just avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. That's, that's a very good tip to know. If I'm ever stranded somewhere in a forest, I will know to look <laughs> for the mushroom types that are happy with my worms. <laughs> that's a good yeah. tip. Um, oh, and one more thing I want to ask you too, what is the difference between um, Bohemia and Moravia? Right. Yeah, I think there was a question what type of mushrooms we have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, what type of mushrooms are they? Yeah, sorry, I missed that. Uh, boletus, I think in English it's called boletus. I don't, I don't know how to in English say, but they are, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to show on my phone, but the phone is streaming on Instagram, so <laughs> it's like a nice, brown hat with the like nice chubby stamp i i don't know but those are like the most the most popular ones and they're they're beautiful okay. just beautiful and they are not perfect because worms like them um see look this mushroom thing is popular brandon does the worm trick apply to all mushrooms see everybody's very interested in this kind of <laughs> mushroomy thing morals um does we, we, uh, there is a question morals we do have some morals yeah but it's not as popular or as common we are more uh, for the yeah i don't know like big ones like big hat big stamp like big ones <laughs> yeah. yes this is it this is it Perfect, perfect. Um, okay, so tell me about and oh look at those big mushrooms on here. Is that right? Yes, those are those are the ones. Yeah, right there. Absolutely delicious. You can bread cover yeah. and fry them and it's like incredible. That's awesome that we've got to find that picture. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, so their time's a charm. Bohemia versus Moravia. <laughs> tell tell me what they are and if I'm saying them right. Again, mushrooms here. Good. Uh, so you are saying it right, but the Czech Republic is divided into three regions. So we have okay. Bohemia, that's the biggest, and that's where Prague is. And then Moravia, that's where I live. And then there is a Silesia, which is the smallest. So we are three and, yeah. And then we have many regions. Okay. So. I read online too, um, or I think I watched a video maybe that said that, that um, the, the people from Bohemia and Moravia don't like to get, like, um, they don't want to be classified as being from the other region when they're not. Is that true or no? 
I don't know, sometimes like, oh, perfect, perfect. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect map up there. Yes, so you see Silesia um, is very, yeah, very small. I mean, yes, that is really tiny sliver on the on the yeah. eastern side there, right? Yeah, on the top. Uh, so, like for example, uh, uh, Prague people are very. Um, it almost seems like they don't they don't like people from Brno because they look at us like, you know, we are something something less than them sometimes. So, so I'm I am proud to be from Moravia. <laughs> And I'm sure people from Prague are proud to be Bohemian, from Bohemia, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the food. So first of all, tell me a little bit about your food blog, and then we'll jump into the food. But um, for the people that are watching that don't know, what's the name of your food blog? What do you focus on? Give us the background there. Uh, so my food blog, it's uh, checkbook.com. And I started it in 2013, uh, so it's been a while. And I have a YouTube channel, Czech Cookbook, uh, because I'm focusing on creating video recipes so people who are visual, they can easily see. And I am very in detail, so I'm perfectionist. Yeah, here is my blog. So you have all the latest recipes, uh, all different kinds of recipes. You can do search on the blog. Uh, there are side dishes, main dishes, desserts, uh, Christmas cookies, the whole Christmas chapter actually, uh, appetizers, just so many over the years uh, I created. Uh, so I realized that it's there is such a need for uh, recipes that are not locked in grams and metric system and they are not locked in the Czech language uh, because so many like honestly, I didn't find any anyone who would be doing doing what I'm doing. So I knew that yeah. there is a need. So why not to share what I struggled with at the beginnings? You know, to find the proper flour, to uh, make the certain foods, and just uh, just those were the biggest. Uh, so many struggles to overcome. So I thought, why not to share it with people? It just you know to show them and and here i am in my parents kitchen like here in the czech republic some videos are in the usa because i am yeah. your blog has been um really helpful for me as some because um for those people that don't know um you moved from czech republic to um california for a while and mm -hmm. wanted to cook the same food that you loved in the czech republic but had a hard time finding the right ingredients and things which you were just talking about. Um, and so your cookbook and your blog focus on making Czech food in the United States, right? Yes. That's, that's a good way to say it. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, your, your blog has been really helpful for me as I've been um, experimenting with food from the Czech Republic because um, you, you've given me good ideas for different substitutions and things like that that I can use. Um, Yes, it's it's hard to find some of those ingredients. So yeah, it's cool. been it's been good. Um, uh, Jean wants to know: Is the food in the Czech Republic similar to Polish food at all? Actually, it is. Uh, it's pretty close. Yeah, I have uh, some people watching from Poland, and they say, "Oh, we have this one." Even from Romania, uh, this one lady, she's on a YouTube subscriber, and she always tells me, "Oh, we have this one, and this is the same." And so I think. Uh, all these like are similar because we just are so close so lots of dishes and we used to be part of austrian hungarian empire so many dishes just evolved from those times and like hungarian goulash uh, langosh so so many but we just so put our much. yeah <laughs> we just put little so, okay. twist on it we just made it our our way so I was making um, one of the foods that I'm making for Czech Republic. It's going to be posted tomorrow on my blog. Um, and forgive me, I'm going to butcher this name, but they're the open face sandwiches. Um, Slobicki. I'm not saying that. Slobicki. 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 Okay. So, um, I, so, first of all, explain what those are to the viewers. Um, and the reason I'm bringing them up is because 
um, in my research about them, I read that they're also popular in Poland too. Yeah. So, but tell tell the reason what those are because I'm sure you can explain it better than I can. Uh, so you usually use a white bread, uh, like a French bread, uh, you slice it and now you put uh, either butter or a special spread uh, that's made of uh, like a ham and peas and mayo and it's just uh, very delicious to put on chlebičky, very, very traditional. And then you layer it with uh, ham, cheese, uh, here they are on Facebook, yes, there is a picture. And you just try to make it very nice and decorative. So uh, you can be as creative as you want, uh, but these are very popular when you bring it to any party. Uh, these are popular also for New Year's Eve. Uh, people eat them. I'm already drooling. <laughs> and they're just they're just delicious. And, yeah. <laughs> and they're also popular to, sorry, they're also popular too in um, like, in coffee shops and things like that like i know at least when i was in Prague, i saw them a lot in like glass cases in yeah. restaurants as like a little snack that you could just pick up and, and eat really quickly too right yeah correct yes those are cool um okay so tell me a little bit about um food in the czech republic so what kind of kinds of meats are common to eat what kinds of vegetables spices those kinds of things um so the most popular meat would probably be pork and chicken. Uh, that's what we eat a lot. Uh, people also used to raise rabbits. So uh, sometimes in the stores you can also find the rabbit. My grandma used to have rabbits, uh, then a beef. But we are not big on a, like a ground beef. Like in the US, okay. it's just so popular. Uh, we would we would just um, like cook the bee, beef until it's completely tender and have it as a side. So like uh, we have so many meals that just beef is paired, like a uh, sliced beef with some sauce, dumplings. Um, chicken is very good, very popular. Um, some people, now it starts to be even turkey, a little more popular, but growing up, we would not even know what turkey meat is or how it tastes <laughs> so okay. fish fish too people try to eat fish uh, even okay. though we have we have lots of lakes so we have many lake fish people go and just fresh yeah fresh water they just go and fish and it's another nice sport that people like to enjoy um what are your common like everyday foods like what is a normal breakfast in the Czech Republic what's a normal dinner um, so normal breakfast uh, would be like a bread fresh bread a bread roll or just regular whole wheat or rye bread or just wheat rye uh, and then we would have it with butter and jam or butter and honey uh, we would also eat soft boiled eggs uh, very popular okay. uh, we would also have sweet uh, like a pastries so some people would eat pastries uh, as a as a breakfast definitely not cereal it's not it's not something that <laughs> it's traditional uh, sometimes like pancakes uh, little different ones uh, but they are similar to yeah pancakes similar to the u.s pancakes oh yeah the bread rolls oh, some good Czech breakfast and sal salami, here. salami also in cheese uh, on a bread. That's yeah. I love the softball eggs. Okay. It's just something I enjoy. Um, what are I love learning about um, holidays in other countries. I don't know why. I just really love mm -hmm. hearing about how other people celebrate. So, what are popular? Like, what's your favorite um, holiday in the Czech Republic? And like, what? food do you have that correlates with that holiday or that reminds you of that holiday? Uh, my favorite, of course, Christmas. It's just like so special. And we have also uh, New Year's Eve that's very big and it's lots of food. Uh, but we don't have like in USA, there is a Thanksgiving, there is a 4th of July. So we don't have those. Uh, we just have Easter. Okay. We have Christmas, we have New Year's Eve. Uh, so that's, uh, 
and those are always special meals that we would eat uh, like for christmas uh, traditional we eat uh, carp breaded fried carp i know in the usa carp is considered like dirty fish but it's just something that is very traditional or some people would do breaded fried like schnitzel and then uh, we pair it with potato salad so that's uh, and of course my in my family we would have chlebičky the open face sandwiches for lunch and then we would have like dinner uh, the the carp and then after that we all unwrap the presents so normally we have big lunches throughout the year and small dinners but on a christmas day it's just it's just opposite we have big dinner and then we open the presents okay that makes sense what are um, some things that you have for snacks? Like if you just want a snack in Czech Republic, what's popular? Mm, I like to snack on cheese, like just snack, uh, or like cheese or salami. Uh, some people like pastries throughout the day, you know, like I like to have uh, coffee time with my mom and we would have always something sweet after the big lunch you know we have the big lunches and then small dinner and also uh fruits or veggies uh, i like to enjoy it too like lots of people in czech republic they have they grow gardens so we would have uh, okay. tomatoes cucumbers so peppers we even like we like to put uh, radishes are very popular too so we, we even like to put like bread butter and tomato with salt. I know it sounds so interesting. <laughs> no, it sounds good. I like I like tomatoes with salt by itself, so put bread and butter with it. Oh, yeah. it. <laughs> Braska has um, uh, some hard eyes there. Emily says, Svachina uh, requires something sweet and a cup of coffee. Coffee times are the best peaceful. So people really like um, yeah. coffee in the Czech Republic. That's yep seems to be a something very popular um and yeah when you're talking about the snacks in do you make blood soup do you, <laughs> what is blood soup do you make blood soup so i'm not um uh, blood soup is when there is a pig slaughter which it's uh during winter times uh people would have it very traditional uh, there would be pig slaughter and then the whole families gather up and they just portion the meat, uh, portion the pork, uh, the, the pig. And of course, there is everything is used from the, from the pig, including the blood. So there would be blood soups. And like, I'm not as big of a fan of that. And I don't, I don't make it because I don't have even access to pig's blood. So, <laughs> but it's something that... <laughs> Yeah, you can you can buy it uh, during winter times when you have the stands outside where people like sell the products uh, usually from this por uh, this pig ki killings or slaughter. It's called zabiachka. No, this looks kind of reddish. Really no. Ours is more dark. Right. Ours is more dark. And it's okay. called prelachka. Um, you never have to worry about your iron levels getting low. Yeah pig blood soup <laughs> does your family enjoy that is that like a traditional meal Do people still make that very frequently or is that more like a it's more every once in a while thing? uh it's more during the winter times uh, when the pig is slaughtered okay. because that's the only time that you have kind of access to it like you cannot just go to the store and buy blood to make blood soup you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, during Lydia the says, yeah. um, oops, sorry yeah, the blood sausage. Um, Lydia says also blood sausage yeah. too. Is that more common? I've heard of blood sausage. I've never heard of blood soup, but I've heard yeah. of blood sausage before. So I have just been that maybe it's more common. It's a, it's the same time that uh, like during the winter when the pig is slaughtered, there is made the soup out of the blood, the blood sausages, lots of different kinds of sausages. So that's the time that you have it. But of of course, yeah, they can be more available. The, the sausages, the blood sausages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, so this kind of leads into my next question. I was, I was already going to ask you, is there anything eaten in Czech Republic that's not eaten anywhere else in the world or anything surprising? So we talked about blood soup, <laughs> blood sausage. Is there anything else 
um, uh, even the Czech Republic that people would be surprised to hear about? Uh, like uh, back in a day, and you can still you can still buy it in some butcher shops. It's brain, like pig's brain. To me, it's kind of just still weird because I didn't grow up eating brains. <laughs> So, but you can still you can still buy it and make some stuff out of it. I don't know if they scramble it with eggs or what they do with it, but it's still available. So that's I think kind of strange. Like I said, we use everything from a pig, so including the brain. So <laughs> and then we eat uh, cow stomach, but that's other nations eat it too. Have some have some scrambled eggs with brain. Wow. Yeah. Was that? Normally? Oh, sorry. I think the it's like cutting out a little bit. That picture up there, it said German, but did that look like something that you eat? Si similar. And again, this is what we make from the pig slaughter, but ours is round and yeah. without that green stuff. I don't know what what was it, but it's it's like a gelatin, yeah. Lydia says um, another surprising thing might be um, raw bacon at a pub with onions and beer. Saw this as, and was, surpri was surprised the bacon wasn't cooked. Bacon, raw bacon. Is that, do you have, is that like, was that specific to that one restaurant or do you find that that's hmm. something normal? I'm trying to, we actually have bacon that's smoked. So it's ready to eat. It's not like U.S. bacon where you have to like fry it and uh, just make it. But we have yeah. like if maybe that what she means because we don't eat we don't eat raw okay. raw like that. We eat uh, like a, we have a special steak. It's called tar tartar st steak, which is raw. Oh yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> which is raw, but I know what tartar. <laughs> um, also, there was a question up on um, Facebook over here. Um, Jacqueline asked, "What types of desserts are popular?" Uh, these are so many different kinds. This, is exact, this question is actually how I got to know you, right? I I messaged you. I found your blog and was like, "Hello, what desserts should I make from the Czech Republic?" Nice yeah. to meet you. Please help. So this is a good <laughs> question. Yeah, very popular is apple strudel. Uh, then we have so many like a uh, bundt cakes, uh, all sorts of bundt cakes. Very popular are what's called kolache, kolaches in the United States, uh, round uh, yeast, uh, yeast dough, raisin dough. Uh, so many different pastries, desserts, honey cake became very popular in the last, last decade. Uh, so it's also another one. Crepes, we love crepes. Uh, and we would decorate That's them. Surprising. Yeah, we would decorate them uh, with all sorts of toppings and mostly sweet, uh, mostly sweet. Uh, what else? All sorts of cakes. Yeah, any cakes you can lots of cake. you can think of. Yeah, sounds like my kind of country. There, <laughs> yeah, lots of cake. Okay, <laughs> like the good. pastries are just incredible. Like they are art. You know, so many are just and Christmas baking. That's another story. Like we bake so many cookies. It's just crazy <laughs> what kind of cookies do you make for christmas so it's almost like competition a little bit so it says that average average czech family bakes like eight eight and this is all from scratch like my cousin she would bake 20 and it, it takes a month to do and actually what? actually you start end of november you start baking okay. And you keep them in a cold place because by the time they actually need to soften up and they get better over time. So they don't go bad. Uh, so you start with the ones that don't have any fillings, any cream. So then over time in a cold place, they nice, nicely soften up. So, and like one, one type, yeah, these are very popular vanilla crescents, uh, very delicious. These are the ones you would bake at first and just let, let it sit. So many, uh, and some take like three days to make because it's so beautifully done. Like we take pride in our cookies. Do you have some for 
um, website? Do you have Christmas cookie yes. rec recipes on your website? Yes, I have a yes. whole section well, called. Find that out. Yeah, whole section called Christmas find and. That out. What about, what is your favorite recipe from Czech Republic and what is something that people eat very often that's not really your favorite? Um, I have so many favorites. It's just hard to pick one <laughs> because I just love, like the most popular one is a beef sirloin uh, called Svičkova. It's absolutely like national meal. It's a uh, very unique only to the Czech Republic. It's something that we created and no other nation has this so it's absolutely delicious meal so that would be probably my top um i love anything like fried mushrooms uh fried anything <laughs> schnitzel <laughs> yeah here is the picture of the svichkova it's just so good and there is a lot of vegetables in it so it's delicious uh, so that's one of the favorites. Uh, also, the sweet. We have also sweet meals. So fruit filled dumplings are also incredible. Like this is something that's that's very common for the Czech Republic to have sweet lunches. That sounds delicious. Yeah, fruit filled dumplings. I yes. can get on board with that. That would be in main, um, main I know news. that your blog is focused around um, taking. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. I think there's like a little delay. So if I start talking while you're talking, it's not intentional. Um, I know that your blog is centered around um, finding ways to cook Czech food when you're not in the Czech Republic. Are there any ingredients or any foods that like just are not the same unless you're in the Czech Republic? Actually, like me living there for so so many years, I came up with, like I could do, I think an, anything, like I could do the farmer's cheese, I could do the dumplings, like there is, it's it's so interesting, like there's nothing that I really like miss. Maybe uh, one thing that I can think of is the Czech uh, brie, like a cheese, uh, which is round okay. and there is, it's something that I cannot get in USA that's completely around <laughs> because uh, okay. it's like uh, you don't see the cheese. So it's uh, so round that you can easily fry it, bread it, bread, bread covered and fry it. Because if you bread it one that's cut, like the triangles, it would leak. So this is right. just, and people put it on a barbecue and it's, it's delicious. So that's probably, but I, I do like, so if I come to back to Czech Republic, that's something I would go to restaurants and just have it because this special round okay. brie, you know. But for the most part, it's really good to hear that you were able to recreate your favorite secret mm -hmm. when you weren't using the exact same ingredients. That's that's really cool, and it shows that you like have put a lot of work into, you know, figuring out ways to be inventive and yeah. and make your favorite recipe. So that's really awesome. Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm trying. One last question <laughs> that I have. Um, tell me about beer culture in Czech Republic because I know that beer is a big deal there, right? It's so big that we are actually number one, uh, number one in the whole world in a, in per capita. Uh, it's just like by double, like the next below us is Austria and then Germany. In beer consumption? Yes, beer consumption. Yeah, per capita is just like so high that like Austria below us is half of what we drink. So it's like so big and I yeah, and we are such a yeah, beer. The best the best is pills don't work well. It's just the best the best beer. And I think it's so popular because in many restaurants it's still cheaper than water. So that's why what yeah if you want to like get water you pay more now now it's uh, now they do the water on a tap so from a tap so that's cheaper oh. but yeah this is the prison orquell brewery uh, the best beer traditional they do tours in this one 
they have also the biggest restaurant in the Czech Republic right behind those gates and it's incredible. And they also, part of the tour is that you get the drink beer straight from those wooden barrels and it's unfiltered, unpasteurized, it's absolutely incredible and chilled because it's cold in those cellars. <laughs> When I was um, doing my backpacking trip around Europe, every country I went to was like, oh, you know, other countries say that they love beer, but no, this country loves beer. I heard that on so many different tours, but then I got to Czech Republic and they said the same thing. And I was like, ah, this is, actually, this is the truth in this country. There was beer everywhere. Everyone was always, you know, talking about it. So like we call it, uh, really we call it liquid bread. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what one of the viewers said down here. Sweet so Twitty says, I love this interview. I'm learning a lot. I'm a big fan of Czech culture. That makes me very happy. So <laughs> I'm really glad that um, you got to come in and tell us about Czech Republic and Czech culture and Czech food. Um, for people that are following um, me and want to start following you, where can they find you? Um, and what like exciting things do you have coming up? Anything you want to talk about? Uh, so I am on YouTube uh, as Czech Cookbook and then on any social media, yes, fa Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, Instagram. Uh, Facebook is um, my biggest, uh, my, my biggest audience and I do post, uh, I try to post like three posts a day, uh, just, just try to be very active and um, also create the new videos. I do video recipes, but while I'm here in the Czech Republic, I also do interesting video blogs where I show you the culture, you know, and also take you on different trips and you see places that you normally don't get to see unless you visit. So while I'm here, I just try to take advantage of it. Uh, and my plans, I will still keep creating new recipes. Uh, and I have also a cookbook, uh, one, first hardcover cookbook and it's volume one so i will be working on more recipes and it's all in english and my cookbook so is uh, my my cookbook is actually in both like metric system and imperial system because i have viewers from cool. yeah I, I figure because i have viewers from all over the world so not everybody's using only imperial system or only metric so right. yeah. yeah that's awesome um and that's a cookbook is a lot of work so that's yeah. a really big accomplishment so congratulations on that was really cool thank you um for anybody you know for anybody that's um watching and does not follow me you can find me on um, instagram facebook youtube um at the foreign fork and then my website is www.foreignfork.com and I'm cooking one meal from every country in the world in alphabetical order. And so um, this week and next week are um, the Czech Republic, which is why we got to talk to Christina today. So thank you so much, Christina, for joining me. I, I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Um, I think my favorite thing I learned is about the mushrooms. Um, <laughs> you need to come and so do some mushroom hunts. <laughs> if you can't, just um, let me know. <laughs> What'd you say? If you come, just let me know and I'll take you to forest and we can do mushroom hunts. <laughs> I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. I love to know. Um, this interview is going to be saved at least on my um, Instagram record. I don't know. I don't know if um, you have the ability to save it. Um, uh, Veronica says, thank you. Uh, hi from Italy. Lots mm -hmm. of love. Thanks, you guys. Following both on Instagram. Really nice interview. Thanks. Aww. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Alexandria. I will yeah, you're welcome. I will talk to you soon, okay? Yes, thank you, and bye, everyone. Yes, <laughs> bye.